Why are we bringing dollars in the middle of our trade? Hello there. Welcome to the Great Africa Channel, and this is Africa Liberation Series. The concept of an African common currency was first introduced in the Abuja Treaty, which aimed to establish an African economic community. The treaty envisioned the creation of an African central bank and a single currency by 2028. African scholar PLO Lumumba has been so vocal about Africa having a common currency and also creating an Africa trade area. The Kenyan president William Samoy Ruto has now joined the movement to push for a common currency in Africa. Listen to his words regarding the African common currency. We are all struggling, and all our businessmen are struggling, and our traders are struggling for, to make payment for goods and services from one country to another because of differences in currency. And in the middle of all this, we are all subjected to a dollar environment. Kenyans want to pay for Tanzanian goods in dollars. Tanzania wants to pay for DRC goods in dollars. Egypt wants to pay. Why are we bringing dollars in the middle of our trade? <laughs> this is the question we should be asking ourselves. And in the process, all our business people are, are stranded. Egypt cannot pay for our tea because they are looking for dollars. We cannot pay for their sugar because we are also looking for dollars. You know? And, and this is the... And, and I, did, I had a conversation with the President Orama of the Afri-Exim Bank, and they have built a mechanism where all our traders can trade in the local currency, and we leave it to the Africa-Exim Bank to settle all the payments in local currency. We do not have to look for dollars. Our businessmen, our business people, our traders will concentrate on moving goods and services and leave the arduous task of currencies to Africa Zimbabwe. I know we are all trying to see because of what the dollar has done to all our economies. The dollar has moved from less than 1% in the U.S. to about 5.2%. With that movement, and I am told, it is the steepest rise in interest rates ever since the, the U.S. established their mechanism. That steep rise has caused us unnecessary trouble. I think it is important for us to figure out. Many of us are saying, oh, maybe we should move away from the dollar to the yuan. Maybe we should move away from the dollar to another currency. I suggest that we have a mechanism where we can settle all our payments, whether between our countries or externally, using our local currencies, and we have a mechanism like the one that has been put up by the Afri Exim to settle all that so that we don't have to be hostage to any one currency or the other. Without a single payment flat platform, payment instructions from one African country to another typically passes through several intermediary financial institutions, leading to increased costs, complications, problems, and unnecessary uh, currency fluctuations and, and ends up being a whole ecosystem of confusion. Trade, ladies and gentlemen, cannot take place without efficient and a unified payment system. Although there has been introduction of several regional payment infrastructure in the continent, we lack a single system that seamlessly facilitates trade among among all our nations, eliminating the obstacles posed by varying currencies. 
I am, however, delighted to note that AfriExim Bank, in its mandate to facilitate intra-Africa and extra-Africa trade, embarked on building a centralized payment and settlement system to support trade under the ACFTA. It is called the Pan-African Payments and Settlement System. Banks and payment providers can plug directly to it to enable secure an instant payment in local currency. The system is designed to reduce or eliminate the challenges of gross border payments and by so doing accelerate intra-Africa trade. We should be able to negotiate together on matters trade. This is one area that countries must surrender some of its issues to the Africa Union the way the EU have done. We can do better than the EU. We can do better than other trading blocks. We have made the conscious decision that we want this continent to be the single trading market with a population by 2050 of 2.5 billion people and a GDP of $3.5 trillion. That commitment will unlock the tremendous potential that we have in this continent. And I am a great believer that the policymakers, the heads of state, will be able to provide the mechanism for us to be able to realize that great potential that exists in our continent. The African Common Currency remains an ongoing project with the goal of fostering economic integration and stability across the continent. While progress has been made, the actual implementation of a single currency for Africa is still a work in progress and further steps and cooperation among African countries will be required to achieve this objective. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video. Keep safe.